Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind. A few days late. With a Dave who is very tired and who has not had a lot of sleep this week. Nevertheless, we are back. No, oh, there really isn't, mate. Not unless you've got a cup of coffee hidden in none of your pockets that you actually have there. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it's been a bit of a crazy week, honestly, just dealing with stuff in the house. Um, not working properly and that sort of shit. It's not, it's not really fixed yet. Um, I was supposed to be getting fixed today, but then the builder cancelled, so he's not coming. So, yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to try and record this today instead, and then once I'm done with this, I'm going to see if I can record some more Total War. And get that out today as well as a sort of double bill to make up for the fact that I didn't get anything out on Wednesday. Which is unfortunate, but sometimes... Uh, it's just the way it goes. Uh, I don't, at the minute, record um, in advance, if you know what I mean. I don't have a buffer of videos for, for when, when days like that happen. Although it actually wouldn't have made a difference because the electricity was out, so I couldn't unload anyway. But anyway, whatever. Um, but, but yeah, I don't... I, either way, I don't actually have a buffer these days. And the reason I don't have a buffer is because... It encourages laziness from me. If I record three videos in one day, that basically means that I don't have to record anything for three weeks. And then once you get to week four, I feel so lazy that it becomes like because I haven't actually. There's basically I've I've no I've established no rhythm. That's like that's that's one of the reasons I instituted this this schedule because once you establish a rhythm and a routine, um, it becomes easier to be a hell of a lot more productive. Um, and when you just record stuff in a huge batch and then upload it over a period of weeks, it doesn't work as well. I don't know, it's difficult to explain, to be honest with you. I'm, like I said, I'm pretty tired right now. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, basically the upside is it's easier for me to keep a schedule if I'm working to a schedule, if you see my point. Um, unfortunately, the downside is that when circumstances arrive that present, that, that present, prevent... Oh, I should just go back to bed, I swear. Um... When circumstances arise that prevent me from actually recording a video on one of those set days, it causes problems, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, generally speaking, actually we've got on all right so far. Just this, this last couple of weeks has been a bit of a mess, unfortunately. Um, but whatever. So we're in Telvos. Getting back to the subject at hand. We're in Telvos. Where we are looking for an alchemist. Whose name I have forgotten. Andil. And generally speaking, so far, it's been a case of sorry, Mario. The princess is in another tower. Um, because I've been searching this place and I can't find the bastard. He's in one of the other towers, I think. I just don't know exactly which one. He's not in here. That's another tower. Um, I think my boots are out of charge, aren't they? No, actually they're not. Good. Barracks and armory. No. Southern tower. No. Jail. No. I know where Master Arian is, he's up in the top of the Telvani sort of mushroomy bit, but it's not him I want right now. Central Tower, no. Oh Christ. Not a good time to run out of charge boots, thanks for that. Northeastern Tower. I don't think so, but I'll check. I think we bumped into you before, haven't we? Yep. I'm, just, I'm back where I started now. <laughs> I'm back where exactly where back where I started. Oh my god. Uh. 
Sorry guys, it's going to be one of those episodes. I don't have the grey cells today to deal with this. Um, at least I'm pretty sure it's not the barracks and armory I want, is it? I'm reasonably sure. Maybe here? No. Damn it all! Someone mentioned in a comment where I could find the guy, and I've unfortunately forgotten because that was like a week ago. Uh, uh, uh. Andil, my dude, where the fuck are you, man? I, I need to find you. Please, so I can continue playing the fucking game. This is why quest markers were invented. Can you ask a question quickly? I must be going. Where is Andil? Tell me now! This closer, just whip out a dagger and hold it to her throat like, Tell me now, where is the fucking alchemist? Is there something? Pot the curry, whatever it is. I need to find Andil, and I need you to get out of my way while you're at it. Thank you. Fucking hell. Services Tower. Thank Christ, we finally found it. Andil, you son of a bitch. Cure Blight. Yes. Good, thank you. This will help. I can spare a few of the potions. Why not take these? Restore health high quality. It's been added to your inventory. Restore fatigue high quality. It's been... Yeah, all right, fair enough. That's not a bad reward. But still. Oh my god. What do you spell? Sell spells, apparently. Righteousness. <laughs> Absorb health 10 points for one second on touch. Not very useful, really. Compared to the ones I've already got. Um, but still. Heart heal. A good spell, heart heal. One of those ones, it's very good, but you can usually cast it at first level. If you have, if you picked restoration as one of your skills. It's, it's pretty good. I'm actually going to take that. I don't think I can cast it very well right now. Well, I don't have enough bloody magicka right now. Um, where's my... Uh, I can't even remember what it's called. What is, what is it called? Robe of... Alteration, that was it. Took me a whole ten seconds to figure that out. My prices are the best. Don't care. Not buying anything from you. Um... I probably hotkeyed the stupid Robe of Alteration, didn't I? Now that I think about it, it's me searching for it in the menu. Probably hotkeyed. Uh... Heart heal. Yeah, 33% chance to cast. Not brilliant. Admittedly, our fatigue is not a full, which is going to affect it somewhat, but yeah. Not great. But that's mostly because our restoration skill is still fairly rubbish. It is indeed. Only 22. Not very good. Actually, on that note... No, you don't, you don't do any training, do you? That's a shame. You have a load of wick wheat for some reason, though. And rat meat. And marshmallow. Marshmallow plus wick wheat. Potions! I don't have any potion making equipment on me. It's all back at my um, hideout. And I'm not very good at alchemy anyway. I just want to, yeah, distinctly average alchemy. I think I gave up trying to make potions, to be honest with you, mostly just because they're crap. Um, you know. I, have to, I do like Mara and Rebirth. I know lots of people don't, but I defiantly remain positive about the mod as, as a general rule. Certainly this version I'm using anyway. I don't know what the newer versions are like, but... Um, I will admit, possibly the only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it makes potions universally shittier across the board, pretty much, for no good reason that I can tell. I guess if you, I mean, admittedly in Morrowind, if you do have like 100 alchemy, you can make some ridiculously OP potions, but 
you should be allowed to with if you've got a hundred fucking alchemy, you know? Come on. If you're not gonna if you're gonna make ridiculously OP amazing potions, it might as well be when you've finally managed to quite make your way to a hundred alchemy, right? Uh, you know. Because the problem is in our end. Uh, a lot of potions are difficult to make because they're difficult to get the ingredients for. Like, it's not like Oblivion where the ingredients for the common types of potion you needed were actually fairly commonly found. You know, you, you'll you'll remember those of you who watched the Oblivion Let's Play the old uh, whole the whole flax and uh, you know, flax seeds and uh, <laughs> and bog beacons combo that you could find just about everywhere. But in Morrowind, if you want to make restore magic potions, you need like gemstones, you know, like, like, and daedra hearts, you know, really valuable rare shit to make restore magic potions. And if you're, if the potions you make on average are just rubbish, you find yourself wondering why the fuck am I bothering, you know? Like, you, restore fatigue potions are easy to make because there's loads of restore fatigue ingredients and there's a fair few restore health ingredients in the game too, but restore magic in particular is one example whether it's rare as rock and ore shit to find the things you need to make it with, and quite often they're so valuable, you're better off selling them and then buying magic of potions instead with the money. So, yeah, bit of a gripe, bit of a gripe. I don't like what it did to alchemy. Um, but aside from that, I think the mod's great. I do recommend it. If you're someone who has played Morrowind to death and wants to refresh the experience a little bit by changing some stuff up, I absolutely recommend Morrowind Rebirth. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend it to a new player. I wouldn't even recommend it to you on your second playthrough, to be honest. It's kind of a third, fourth playthrough thing, a bare minimum. But, yeah. Um, what am I looking for here? That tape. Oh, come on. There we go. Right. Master Arian. It's about fucking time. Who the hell are you? I'm Teradus Talanian, chief of Master Arian's mercenary guard, providing for the prosperity of Telvos, the village of Vos is my trade, and, from the looks of you, adventuring is your trade. If you're an adventurer, would you be interested in a little work? Possibly. We've been trying to establish trade links with the Zynab. Master Arian thinks that the shared self-interest will make the Zynab more careful about offending Telvos, but dealing with the Zynab is tricky. Uh, requiring knowledge of the Ashlanders, a silver tongue, and sharp wits. I'll pay you 100 drakes to visit the Zynab camp and find out what goods the tribe would be interested in trading for. Will you take the job? I guess. I don't feel I'm that qualified for it, but that's never stopped me before. When you determine the trade goods wanted by the Zynab, report back to me. I hope to engage them in a trade as a step towards establishing better relations with them. Sound plan. For sure. Well, we're headed that way anyway. It's the only reason I accepted that quest. It's because we're headed that way anyway, because we need to go to the ruins of Nshulet after we're done here. So. Apparently it is, it is a fine plate. Yes, yes, it's a fine plate, sir. Hello. Why is it with guards wearing... Just trousers and nothing else, Master Arian. You, you, he's probably into some weird shit, isn't he? He's a Telvani, after all. I am Master Arian of House Telvani. What brings you here? Chores? <laughs> You're the outlander that has caused so much trouble. No, don't get me wrong. I'm pleased at what you've already accomplished. I may have a few things for you to do later, but for now, speak with Galat Mathendis, my mouth and outside of my... Uh, right, yeah, no, there's a reason I came here aside from chores, wasn't there, though? Uh... Was I supposed to deliver something to you or something? I don't, I can't even remember why I'm here now. Oh dear. Um. Inmate Corpsarium, Methus, Richard, the Gallus Methendus. Your blight to Andil. Oh yeah, I know. It looks like I don't actually need to talk to you. I actually, the only reason I came here is for Andil. It would seem. Looking at my journal now, I thought for some reason I needed to talk to you. I think I wanted to come and see him anyway, in case he had any chores. Um, but he doesn't. So, 
knows who we are, though, interestingly enough. But, um, yeah, no, okay, wow. Yeah, my memory's not great, is it, apparently? You got anything else to talk to us about, my friend? She doesn't. Let's open your eyes again, looks creepy otherwise. Um, Maladas. Maladas Demnavani is a reclusive member of House Telvani. He lives in Arv's Drellin, just northwest of Nisus. Gothrin. He is the current head of House Telvani. He has held this position for many years. If you need to speak with him, you may find him in... I think you've just got generic replies for me, haven't you, unfortunately? Unless... Driven to seek power, so no one will have any control over him, but power is a quality that must be cultivated and nurtured. It is a reward to be earned through intellect and patience. It cannot be gained and held through chance. In the wrong hands, it will only prove self-destructive, and in the wrong hands, it can damage the house you lead as well. So what about the other houses then? What about Drez? House Drez holds the lands in the far south of Morrowind, the southern central district as the Imperials divide it. The Talvani have little direct contact or conflict with them. They are traditionalists, particularly regarding the right to own slaves, and in this we find in a degree of common ground. House Drez and House Talvani are often found arguing the same points against Imperial influence in Dunmer affairs. House Halu has a respectable talent for ruthlessness and guile, but their reliance on wealth is a weakness. Behind their mercenaries and Imperial allies, the Halalu are neither great warriors nor masterful spell rites. They lack self-sufficiency. Money can only buy so much. In troubled times, when trade collapses and every faction has to fend for itself, House Halalu could find itself disadvantaged. Oh yeah, believe me. They probably will. Uh, House Inderil. Their strength comes from their bond with the temple. Where the temple has power, they have power. Where it is powerless, they are powerless. The Inderil slander us as faithless, but the tribunal gods have not voiced any displeasure with us, and we have always supported our rights and customs. Uh... And have always supported our rights and customs. Telvani are not faithless. It's simply that we are not votary fanatics like the Indoril. House Redoran is almost mimicking the Altmer by being trapped by static traditions and chivalrous notions that should have been left behind in the Somerset Isle when the Kaimer at Dunmer migrated to Morrowind. They are the warrior house of the Dunmer, but the brand of war they train to fight is long gone. To some, we seem like a contradiction, an organization that is based on individualism, but tradition and common sense hold the house together, and we've done uh, and have done for thousands of years. We support one another from outside outside foes as a house so that we can each pursue our own interests. Although under Galthrin, House Telvani seems to seems to see outside foes everywhere, even inside our house. Uh-huh. People have been sneaking into Kushta uh Kush Kush Tashpi, the Daedric ruin on the coast of the west. Doubtlessly, followers of Molag Baal, as Kush Tashpi is a minor shrine to the king of rape. These cultists may uh, must not have heard what I did to the last ones who set themselves up there. Molag Baal cultists are a great nuisance, disturbing my peace with their abductions and violation of the local farmers and travellers. I suppose I shall have, have to have them cleared out. Yeah, they sound like a charming bunch of people. Uh, little advice. Do not meddle in the affairs of wizards, for they are likely to incinerate you for your trouble. If you really must meddle, use a light touch and a long arm. Do not meddle in the affairs of wizards. Why do I feel like that's a famous quote from somewhere? It's not Lord of the Rings, is it? I'm not sure. Can't remember. Um... There are two powerful mages in Sadrath Mora who are not members of House Talvani and who offer training to anyone who can afford their prices. One is a master of the School of Illusion, the other a master of the School of Mysticism. Narrow fields of expertise, but impressive nonetheless. I must see about re recruiting them into my service. Master Nell, he lives in Telnaga, the tower in Sadrath Mora. He has a short temper, but he will listen to reason if you are persuasive enough. Do not expect him to be polite. Mistress Dratha is the olding, oldest living Talvani counselor and is sustained by the necromantic arts. She dislikes men of all races, although I do not know why. You may find her in a ha in her tower at Telmora. Uh, Morrowind law. Not even Talvani mage lords are, mage lords are immune to bug musk. Of course, just because they like you better doesn't mean they'll let you walk all over them. The Talvani mindset of self devotion is too deeply ingrained to be overcome by a passing fancy.
I am a sorcerer, though trade is rather an uncouth word for it, Vapor Sylvan. I am a master of the many magical arts, enchantment, destruction, and conjuration in particular. Most of my time is spent researching new techniques and techniques and secrets and in creating magical artifacts. I am also a mage lord of the Telvani Council, and while I have a mouth and sad with Mora to take care of the petty affairs, there are many more serious and far-reaching matters that need my personal thought and attention. Services. My minions in the services tower can see to your needs. The people of Voss may be able to provide you some services too. If you're interested in the School of Restoration, you will find the healer Yakin Bale down in Voss Chapel to be a most capable teacher. As it turns out, I actually do. That's really useful, dude. Thank you. <laughs> That's a happy coincidence. Um, he's quite altruistic for a Dunmer as well. Yakin is not a member of House Telvani, and I will leave you to consider whether that trait of his would hinder or help him if he did desire to join. Um... What do you think of Telvos, Vapasolvin? The architecture is quite unusual and not to the taste of all, but the contrast in styles tickles my fancy. The imperial style is exotic, while the traditional fungal tower adds a familiar and homely aspect. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's the opposite way around for most people playing the game, but for him it's the other way around. Um, there is a multi-layered symbolism to Telvos for sharp eyes and sharper minds to interpret should they care for such things. Watch where you walk, though, not everywhere. Here is safe for wanderers. Some of my Daedric servants are overzealous in their guard duties. Yeah, I've noticed. I don't think you actually have any Daedric servants anymore, mate. All right. That's enough talking to you. Let's go. That's his bedroom. I'm not going to go down there. Notes by Arian. I'm just going to have a little glance at this while he's not looking. The paper is filled with cryptic notes taken by Master Arian while reading Megasta Kvata Kvatis. Oh, really? That's a necromancer book. Oh my god, dude! Fuck it. Thank you. Honestly. Speak freely, friend. Right. So. Levitating time. I gosh, probably should have sold those actually while I had the chance. Never mind. Actually, a bit slow fall would do the job, although I can't cast it. So never mind. As if levitate is cheaper than slow fall. To cast, that makes no damn sense at all. Alright. So. These are big, big flipping trees, aren't they? That's for sure. All right. So. So. That's done. We now need to head this way. Like this. Ah. Well, there you go. By pure chance, I turned the camera and I was already pointing straight at Nishulif. There it is, over there. Um, the wonders of distant terrain added by mods. What the fuck? Okay. Weird. Um... Allowing me to see the place from all, all the way over here. I have to admit, it's been said before, but actually, I mean, the distant terrain is, is great. It looks gorgeous from a distance, I will say. But it does dispel the mystery somewhat. Morrowind definitely felt bigger back in the days when I could only see as far as, like, that hill in front of me there. You know, it's like, you, oh, you must go on an expedition to find the ruins of Nashulef. It was a big deal. Like, it would take you a while to find it. You know, heading out into the Grayslands to find this 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 Dwemer ruin was like, you know, it was no simple matter. Oh, hello. 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 They're crowded out here, frankly. All right, come on, then. Um, there's no simple matter, but actually, with distant terrain, it's like, well, it's just over there, I can see it. From Tel Vos, you know, it's like, well, okay. Well, I guess I'm not complaining, I think I'd rather have distant terrain than not have distant terrain, but you know what I mean, right? It's... One of those things, it's like, it's, I've, I've said it before whenever I went back when I played Oblivion, one of the problems I had with that game is everything felt a bit too close together. 
and it wasn't really close together at all. It's, it's one of the biggest games I've ever done. Five. Come on, then. Um, whoa, okay. Quite finished. Greater Imp. Jesus Christ. Imps? I don't remember imps being that scary in Oblivion. Thanks for the shiny amulet, though. Oof. Good grief. Imps. Not to be trifled with, it would seem. In spite of the name. Anyway. Something a little bit dark. Oh, it's because I took the uh, night, night eye amulet off. Yeah, well, that's fine. We don't need it on right now. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Something, something about Oblivion. Oh yeah, the problem, problem with Oblivion was the way they laid the thing out. In spite of the province itself being massive, like really mahusive, it was really big compared to Skyrim and uh, and Morrowind. Um, it didn't feel very big because no matter where you were in the province, practically, unless you went to like the really further, you know, sort of further to the, the English what, but the farthest south or and and western extremities. You could pr still see the Imperial City from pretty much anywhere in the province, and it contributed to a feeling for me of the province being a lot smaller than it actually was, just because you could see the Imperial City from wherever you were. Nothing with that was ever ob ever obscured or blocked by mountains and things like that, um, which gives you the illusion of the place being a lot bigger when you can't see where it is you're going to in the distance. And Morrowind does that to an extent. It wasn't really, I don't think it was a conscious decision by the designers at the time, of course, because the view distance, you know, the draw distance was very small. But they, it's certainly something they took into account, I think, when they made Skyrim. There's a reason there's lots of big-ass mountains in the way, preventing you from seeing stuff. Um, of course, the problem they had, they had with Skyrim... Okay, yeah, we need the amulet back. The problem with Skyrim, unfortunately, by contrast, was the fact that they put so many mountains and things in the way that... It meant that if you wanted to get from one place of the province to another, there was really only like about three or four different routes you could take, and after a while it got very repetitive. So. Mr. Dwarven Spectre, hello. Is there more of your kind lurking around here? I have a feeling it probably is. Place is crowded. What do we have here? Aha! Just take that. I'll have a poke around the rest of the place while I'm here. Single dwarven bolt, maybe not. Raw ebony. Oh, it's heavy stuff, but I'll take it, I guess. I haven't been using any shield spells at the minute. I'm, 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 I'm living dangerously right now. I'm not using my best weapon skill, and I'm not using any shield magic. Raw glass. You have no idea how much raw glass I connected in the vanilla game, hoping that I could make glass armor with it. Same with ebony. Jesus Christ, these are huge steel kegs, aren't they? Um, until I discovered that you can't actually craft armor. It's like the same with netch leather. When I first ever played Morrowind, I hoarded netch leather, hoping I could turn it into armor. And uh, as it turned out, you couldn't. <laughs> it was just an alchemy ingredient, no more, no less. Of course... You actually can, I think. If you get enough glass, you can actually get glass armor. But only with the addition of the Tribunal Expansion Pack. That's when they allowed you to, actually. Because you, well, you don't craft it yourself. You, you talk to an NPC, if I recall. Lock level 2? It's a bit pathetic. Is there even any point in locking it? I mean, there's nothing, nothing in there anyway. Shh. 
expected one of those to be cursed. Oh, hello, 25 Dwemer coins. Not bad. Scarab schematics. I'm going to wonder if I should start selling these. I've got enough Scarab schematics at home as it is. But anyway, yeah, there's an, there's an NPC I think you can talk to to get uh, various kinds of armor made in the Tribunal expansion. I think he does glass and ebony and uh, adamantium as well. Adamantium armor was pretty cool, I have to admit, actually. Never made a comeback in any of the following games, did it, now that I think about it? But I think the reason for that was because it was made of a material that could only be found in the ruins of Mournhold. So that would probably explain why you don't see it in the other games, because it was made of a very, very specific rare resource that only existed in that part of the world. So fair enough. But it was cool armor. It was definitely very cool armor. So I think it was a medium armor, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was a very high-level medium armor. Which was definitely worth getting if you weren't interested in killing an ordinator and nicking all his armor, because that I think I think that was the best medium armor in the game. I may have already searched those once. I'm sorry if I'm annoying you right now. Like I said, I haven't had a lot of sleep, so my ability to play the game is even worse than usual. I think this is it, really, isn't it? This is not a very big ruin. The shoe left. It's, it's kind of small. Like a lot of the ruins in this game. It's not like Skyrim, where you enter a ruin and then you're down there for the better part of an hour. Um, it's just a little outpost, really. Oh my god, what? Oh, it's a tiny, tiny rat. Oh my god. No wonder I didn't see it. I, th I thought I was being attacked by an invisible rat, or it was somehow stuck under the ground or something. No, it's just a teeny, tiny little rat. Okay, well, we're now going to go talk to the Zynab, who I believe, I, for once, I can't actually see them from here. I can't up a bit. I believe they're around here somewhere, though. They're kind of slap bang in the middle of the Grayslands and hello an ancestral tomb. I think I might be robbing you. Um Look at how full of angry wildlife the Grayslands are. At least cliff races aren't quite so common up here. That's an Ashland problem. Are you hostile or not? I mean, she just looks like a random guar herder. Yeah, I thought you might. <sighs> Lady, seriously, I nearly killed you there. Yep, you're just a guar herder. Fair enough. Aha! Look at me stumbling into success by accident constantly. Yeah, we'll go talk to the Zynab in a minute. I'm just going to rob their, this tomb right next to their camp first. <laughs> um, theory me. Okay. Venom Ancestral Tomb. i just wait here for a second while I get my fatigue back. I know I've got fatigue potions, but I'd rather I'd rather use them in combat, you know. Although I generally find I don't seem to need to use them in combat quite so much in this game. It's not like Skyrim where you have to drink them every five seconds. That's certainly Skyrim with the mods I've got installed for Skyrim. Oh my god. It's a particularly bad combo of mods I've got which make stamina just, uh, you know, completely and utterly both essential to combat and also runs out constantly, so... Makes the game quite annoying, to be honest. Right. Okay. That's probably hotkeyed as well, that amulet. 
now I think about it. Oh, well, maybe not. The robe is, though. Wow. Now that's interesting. Let's see if I can untrap it first, at least. Alright. It's detrapped. The question is, can I get it open? I don't think I can. Do I have any scrolls? This is such a good track of music that's playing right now, by the way. I think it's one of the... Yeah, it's one of the modded ones. I think... Is it, was it from Morrowind Rebirth? I can't remember. I think it's Morrowind Rebirth. It has a bunch of optional music soundtrack bits that you can put into the game as well. Um, and I've been using them for, well, a long time now, actually. Pretty much since the start of the Let's Play. And I actually like them. I've said it before, but... Normally, I don't, don't, I don't fuck with the Morrowind soundtrack because it's kind of sacred to me. But actually, these these rebirth sound you know, songs that they've put in, they've added to the game. It hasn't replaced anything. It's just added it, you know, to the folder. They're actually quality. They fit into the game really nicely. I don't know who composed it, but they did a good job. Um, yeah, I don't think we can get this open. I don't think we can get this open. I really don't think. No, not even, not even with a master's lockpick. I cannot unpick that. And I do not have any magic that will get it open either. Unfortunately, I cannot simply cast on Ducey's key at it twice. It doesn't work like that. Peculiar. There's probably something good in there, though. It's, well, there's either something good in there or someone nearby has a key for it, so... <laughs> Alright, let's go talk to the Zynab. I think we bumped into Ashlanders before, haven't we? Yeah, the the Arabin Imson we, we briefly encountered. I don't think we did. We didn't stay for very long, though, because they weren't very friendly. Let's hope this lot are slightly more friendly. Hello. Zabba. You come to us, Outlander. You ask us about the trade goods wanted among the Zynab. We are just with the women. No one listens to us. But since you ask, we will tell you what we think. Considering this, I can only speak to a friend. Oh, really? Really? You're going to be like that, huh? All right, you know what? Tell you what. I'll just try and persuade you a bit before I start wasting magic on you. There we go. That should do it. We Zynab make everything we need. We do not need things from outsiders. But our men get common diseases and blight diseases when they do go out hunting or tending the herds. They are sometimes gone for long times and cannot return all the way back to, to camp to be cured by the wise women. The settled people make the bottled magics that cure common disease and blight disease, but the Zainab are often in short supply of these things. Such bottled magics might be the trade goods we would want. So you guys just don't do alchemy then? That's surprising. Really, actually. Um, so, well, that's useful. I suppose I'll ask around a bit more first, but... Sakulikrib. Sakulurib. Sakulurib. I'm waiting. Alright, calm down. Trade goods we have in plenty. What, does the Outlander think we are savages? Kind of. Um, because we do not have the things the settled people have. Big buildings, heavy furniture. We have no use for this trash. And do we need to dress ourselves in foolish clothes and stand about with fancy weapons to feel like men? Ha! Ah. But of course you do not know the Velothi. You call us Ashlanders after all. It's not your fault, Outlander. Told you, we need nothing. Let's see. So if I talked to you first, you would have been very 
unhelpful, but since I talked to one of the ladies, they actually were quite a lot more helpful. I want to talk to the wise woman. Why not? Ooh. Is this an Ashlander thing? Do you guys, like, dye your eyebrows a different color or something? Considering this, I can only speak to a friend. That's fine. Come on, you like me. I'm an alright guy for an Outlander, right? So you come to ask about the trade good one goods wanted by the Zeit now. Perhaps I should ask you why you want to know. But perhaps I already know why. The Mage Lord Master Arian is shrewd. He thinks to bind us to Talvani ways by binding us to Talvani things. But I see no harm and much good in giving you an answer. We need more cure common disease and cure blight disease potions. Our men travel long distances, hunting and herding and so on and so on. Uh, too busy or too proud to hurry back to camp for cures. If we give them enough potions to carry with them, they could cure themselves. You roof-loving people are better at some things than our people, and bottling magic is one of them. I see. You sell spells. Urge magic. Rapid regenerate. That looks like a really difficult spell to cast. Cure poison. Council. If you outline my council is free because it is worthless to you, but someday perhaps you will have a problem you can't solve, then perhaps you'll bring it to me. And perhaps I will help you for a price. You know what? Screw it, why not? I, I've, I have had a few disturbing dreams. It's been a while now, but yeah, they were pretty weird. The dreams are the sendings of the Sharmat Dagoth Ur. They are evil sendings, black lies. Do not listen to these dreams or they will drive you mad. Okay. That's different from Caius's other just dreams response. We don't talk about this normally because Caius told us not to on account of we might get locked up by the temple or burned at the stake or something, but I have a feeling I don't have to worry about that with these people. What about Red Mountain? Red Mountain is the great mountain of fire in the center of Vardenfell. The outer slopes are steep and rugged, and the crater is deep and filled with burning rock. Beasts and servants of the devil Dagoth Ur live on Red, Red Mountain. The settled people built a magical barrier called the Ghost Fence to keep the evils inside. Within the Ghost Fence, rain never falls and the sun never shines. The only weather is the red and deadly ash blight. Dagoth Ur is the devil and the enemy. Dagoth Ur and his beasts and servants are the source of many evils that beset the Dunmer and Morrowind. Dagoth Ur dwells in fiery caverns beneath Red Mountain, served by his kin called Ash Vampires and by legions of deformed monsters. Okay. Um, Zynab. I do not know what you have heard of us, Outlander, but if it is a compliment, which is probably true, uh, if it, but if it is a compliment, it is probably true. There is nothing as true as compliment, as well as nothing as, as well as nothing as false, is the Zynab saying. The Zynab are what we need to be when we need, are what we need to be when we need to be, and still live as true Velothi. We have the best lands of all the Velothi tribes. Of course, this makes many of them envious and the Talvani covetous. Rumors? They call them corpus beasts. They come from Red Mountain. Once they were men, then Blightstorms come. They walk in the storms, they get sick, grow fat and stupid. Now they wander like mad beasts, killing and eating. Very, very bad. And apparently some of them are locked up underneath Devraith Beer's tower. Looking for a cure. Alright, well, fascinating discussion. And that is not me being sarcastic at all. Um... I think we probably have all the information we want. The running theme seems to be... It's the Ash Khan's year, isn't it, yeah? Our running theme seems to be the men are too proud to tell us what they want, and but the women will. So, you know what? I'm not going to talk to the Ash Khan. Actually, you know, fuck it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Kaushad. Hello, Kaushad. Welcome, Outlander. The hospitality of the open-handed Zynab is always welcome, open to travellers. It makes a nice change from the other guys. Travellers are always welcome here, Outlander. All that is required is that you speak and act with courtesy, and you share your news of the outside world to pay for your hospitality, as for a wise chief keeps himself informed about events. Not so. Thank you for sharing these tales and rumours. For our part, we have little news. We hear other tribes are troubled by blight storms and monsters, but we are the mighty Zynab, and such things do not bother us.
I told you we need nothing. Uh, okay. What is this? They call them corpus, but yeah, okay. Advice? Do not call us Ashlanders. Ashlanders is what you Outlanders and the Settle people both have named all the tribes for some reason. The Zainab and all other tribes call ourselves Velothi. Do the same, and you will find the Zainab and all the other tribes listen better to your words. Okay. Hmm. Thank you for that. I will make a mental note for Lothi, not Ashlanders. Trader, our trader Asher Dan. Has his yurt near mine in the Gulakans Gulakans uh, yurts. There is also Ababail Timsar Dadison. He was the chief trader for the Zainab until he passed that role onto his apprentice, Asher Dan. Ababail has his own year with the rest of the tribe. Maybe I should talk to these guys then. He's the Zainab's chief trader, as the and the son of our wise woman uh wise woman Sonumumu. Oh my god, these names. <laughs> he is the uh the apprentice of Ababail Tim's whatever, who was the chief trade yeah, okay. He's the former chief trader for the Zainab. In his youth, he traveled to many places, including the lands of the Empire. Then he returned to share what he had learned with the Zainab. His knowledge of the Empire and the settled peoples has been of help to the Zainab. I see. Great. Well, you know, I'm just going to go talk to them, I guess. Um, you know what? They're weird and primitive and, and kind of savage, but I think Fathis kind of is, fa is, is equal parts fascinated by them. And also... I don't know, I guess feels almost slightly sorry for them, because they, much like him, have also been dicked over by the Empire as well. And they seem to tell him the truth a lot more often than anybody else in the, in, in the entirety of Morrowind, really, that he's bumped into so far. It's clear the Temple lies about a lot of stuff. The Empire is, well, the Empire. Um, the Talvani are a bunch of just lunatics. These guys seem to be very straightforward and straight thinking and honest. And that's a refreshing change. Uh, what was the name of the guy? Ashibar, was that it perhaps? Red good wanted. This is a very easy matter. We, we need nothing, yeah, okay. Tim Sar That's the other one we want. And then the other one is Asher Dan. Okay. You're the trader then. You should theoretically tell me what you need, right? I'm Ashodan, the trader here at the Zainab camps. So you want to know trade goods wanted? I can tell you what I think. I told you we have. Really? Dude, really? Oh, I tell you what. I've not repaired any of my shit in ages, have I? So I tell you what. You, my friend, are about to make a lot of money. I'm not wearing a Dark Brotherhood cuirass. I thought I had a glass cuirass around his. No, it's glass graves, isn't it? Uh, all right. Would you like these spider pauldrons? You don't have a lot of money, mind you, actually, though, so... Yeah, no, forget it. I'm going to sell someone who's got more cash. <laughs> However, you might like these. Yeah, there you go. Come on, lad. Really? Fine. There you go. Just like me very much now, does he? Let's see if we can repair the damage there. Oh, dear. It's not going so great. It's really not going so great at all. <laughs> oh god. Oh, it's gonna be one of those ones where it just circles the drain to zero, isn't it? Oh come on, dude. I'm really not that bad. Come on, random dice rolling in the background. Give me a break here. Screw it. I don't even know why I care, but I do. Um, oh, bollocks.
Oh my god, this guy is this guy is a tough nut to crack, isn't he? Holy shit. It's been a while since I've had this much trouble with an NPC. I'm trying to persuade them. Wow. Just wow. Holy fuck. I am astonished. It's not my my fatigue is full as well, so it's not that that's screwing me over here. Oh, hey, I'm training my speechcraft, which is nice, I guess. Holy crap, dude! Come on! Oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, shit. Had to say it, didn't I? What is your problem, man? What is your problem? Why don't you like me so much? Why, why? I don't get it. Why do you hate me? <sighs> the thing is, he's actually a trader, so it's actually worth having decent... It's not like a random NPC, you know? It's, like, it's actually genuinely worth having a decent disposition with him. But fucking hell! This guy just does... He just doesn't like me on a fundamental level. He just fucking hates Vathis because he's refusing to be admired at all. Normally I can get away with admiring people and persuading them and it's not really a problem. But sweet Jesus, this guy is having none of it. I am getting lots of training out of this though, which is nice. I am cur I am. I am obviously conscious of the fact that this is extremely boring to watch and for that I do apologize you know what fuck it fuck it the guy hates me and I, I I just I just I give up whatever the guy just yeah zero disposition now even with the charm spell on him fuck it I give up I give up I give up at this point I hate you too mate so the feelings mutual <laughs>